Okay. Um, our last topic involving conditional probability is going to be an example from the OJ simple uh, the OJ Simpson trial. Now. So the example involves how Bayes' theorem could come into play in a legal situation. And the example we're going to talk about is the O.J. Simpson trial. Okay, it's one of my favorite examples. The O.J. Simpson trial is a little bit of a dated um, reference. So... Uh, a lot of the people, uh, a lot of most students at this point were not even born at the time of the O.J. Simpson trial. And O.J. Simpson just died recently in 2024. Um, here's the backstory. So Simpson, O.J. Simpson, first of all, was a, a famous football player. Uh, and an actor and, and a lot of things, a well-known person. And in 1994, Simpson was accused of murdering his ex-wife, Nicole Simpson, and Ron Goldman who was a waiter in the neighborhood. This was in Brentwood, California, neighborhood in Los Angeles. So this led to, um, so you can look this up online and I'd encourage you to do so. There's quite a bit of uh, media coverage of this. Um, so what happened is the uh, Simpson was a famous football player. There was a murder that occurred. Um, and then there was a low speed chase involving a white Ford Bronco on the, um, well, one of the expressways, one of the, one of the highways in, um, in Los Angeles. For those familiar with the Kardashians, the, uh, the father of the Kardashians, Rob Kardashian, was O.J. Simpson's lawyer. Um, was his name Rob Kardashian? I think it was. Um, and there's some interesting things involving Kardashian in that trial that aren't really relevant to this example, and so on and so forth. So a lot of interesting things happened. And it was a very high-profile case, and it actually was televised on TV. And it was it was a very famous court case. OK, now. One of the pieces of evidence that was um, discussed at trial was the fact that O.J. Simpson. So O.J. Simpson had a prior record of abuse of his of abusing his wife and in particular the wife, the ex-wife that he had that that uh, had just been murdered. And so he was being accused of the murder and that abuse was being used as evidence that he was guilty. Alan Dershowitz was one of um, so the evidence being submitted was that of was spousal abuse. Alan Dershowitz was one of O.J. Simpson's lawyers. Uh, Alan Dershowitz is a Harvard professor, law professor, and a very well-known lawyer. He's still very well-known on TV. Um, and what his argument was at the trial is that only one in 1,000 Abuse of husbands eventually murder their wives.
I'm not sure if this is an exact quote, but this was the argument. So there's a statistic which says um, of all the um, spousal abuse situations, one in a thousand result ultimately in a, in a murder of the of the of the person being abused. So the logic from Dershowitz was this isn't evidence of anything. It actually proves that Simpson is less likely. It is like one in a thousand to be guilty. Um, let's think about that. So uh, just to just to recount the facts, he had a history, Simpson had a history of spousal abuse. Um, the argument um Dershowitz's argument was posited to counteract this fact, and is it a valid argument? Is Dershowitz's argument valid? All right, so we have an accusation, we have two events, so Simpson's either guilty or not guilty. So let's set up this problem. So B, let's let B be the event that the wife is assaulted. So that's the evidence that we're going to have, right? Wife assaulted by husband. G is going to be the event that the husband is guilty of murdering the wife. And what Dershowitz is arguing is that the probability of guilt given abuse is one in a thousand. And we'll take that, we'll take his word for it. In other words, we'll take the word for it uh, that that's a true statistic, one in a thousand. Um, so he presents it as a remote possibility. It's very unlikely based on that evidence alone. Uh, there happened to be quite a bit of other evidence, including simpson's dna and blood at the crime scene but ignoring that ignoring that incidentally um if we only look at this D dershowitz says it's it's not enough it's 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 actually quite um remote what's missing here though what's missing is to say well what dershowitz's argument is saying is that of all the relationships out there one in a thousand will lead to a murder. But in this case, we actually have a murder, right? So M is an additional piece of evidence, which is that the wife actually was murdered. So what we actually want to calculate is a little bit different. We want to calculate the probability of guilt given a history of abuse and that the wife was murdered. Right, we have to condition on the information that there's actually a dead body. How can we do this? Let's use Bayes' rule. So we want the probability guilt given abuse and murder. How do we do that? Well, it's the Numerator, guilt and abuse and murder over abuse and murder and move this down to the next page. How do we simplify this? 
probability of murder given. So now we have the multiplication rule on the top. Guilt and abuse. We can do it in any order that's convenient for us. So this is what's nice about it is that we can actually write this in any order we want. And we we're, well, the order that we're going to pick is the one that it gives us conditional probabilities that we actually know the probability for. Okay, and the denominator probably of M given the probability of B. Okay. Um, let's simplify this a little further. So probability of Bs go, go away. So we have probability of M given GB, probability of G given B. Okay probability of M given B. So we take it as a given that there was abuse. And that's, that is a given in this case. We knew that this was the case. And now we can apply full, full blown Bayes rule. So the, the numerator stays the same. And the denominator is going to be So we take abuse for granted. All right. Well, this is this is the formula. Now we have to get the the relevant probability. So what are the date? What's the data? Okay. And let's come up with some estimates. So this is how we actually would apply statistics or probability in the real world. What's the probability of a murder that the wife was murdered, given that the husband is guilty of murdering her? Well, that's obviously one because we're assuming that there's someone guilty of doing the thing that we're asking about so this is one and adding in the b doesn't change that because it's it's redundant right to say that someone's guilty of something of the murder then the murder happened and then you can add as much information on as you want it still happened um what about the probability of a murder so the probability that the wife was murdered given that the husband was not guilty of the murder. So of course it's possible that someone else committed the crime. So we'll, we'll get a little data. So in 1994, which is when this happened, um, there were 5,000 murders. Uh, in the United States, 1,500 were by the husband or the ex-husband. And 3,500 were not. So let's assume a population of 100 million women. Then what that tells us is that the probability of a murder given husband is not guilty. Well, there are 3,500 murders in such a scenario out of a hundred million people is about one in 30,000. So that alone is pretty interesting, pretty unlikely, um, pretty unlikely to get murdered by someone other than a close relative. This is a pretty, you know, this is why, you know, statistically, this is why the, close family members, close friends, close relatives tend to be the first suspects in cases like this because it's just statistically what turns out to be the case. Um, probability of guilt given abuse. This is Dershowitz's statistic, one in a thousand. And probability of not guilty given abuse is one minus that 999 over a thousand. So now we plug in.
All right, plug it in. All right, probability of M given GB was one, times probability of G given B was one in a thousand, so that's Dershowitz. But what he didn't do was take that extra denominator into account. So we get one times one in a thousand. But how unlikely is the other scenario, right? It's extremely unlikely that you have an abusive husband, a murdered wife, and that that wife is murdered by somebody else other than the husband, right? So that's probably if M given B, G complement, which is the same as M given G complement. That was one over 30,000 times probably of not guilty given abuse. which was 999 over 1,000. So if we do this, if we do the math on this, this turns out to equal 30,000 divided by 30,999, which is approximately 97%. Big difference from what Dershowitz was trying to argue from one over one in a thousand to actually 97%. This information alone makes it very likely um, that Simpson was guilty. Is it is that enough to convict beyond reasonable doubt? That's not really what this problem's about, but given other evidence, it may be relevant information. Now, what ended up happening in the trial, Simpson, as I mentioned, Simpson's DNA evidence was all over the crime scene in addition there was evidence at his house that matched up with the crime scene one thing being a bloody leather glove that was on his property um during the trial he was asked to try on the glove it did not it didn't fit and as simpson's lawyer argued if it, if it doesn't fit you must acquit ultimately simpson was found not guilty and a few years later, Simpson wrote a book called If I Did It, where he described insisting that on his innocence, what he's described was um, that he didn't do it. But if he had done it, he described how he would have how he would have done it. And incidentally, his description was pretty much identical to what happened. So um that's the story of the O.J. Simpson trial and how Bayes, Bayes' theorem, Bayes' rule could, could be used to refute one of the arguments of the lawyers in that trial.